Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video uh, and this is another video in the series of videos uh, in the mode of inheritance of genetic diseases uh, in the previous videos I told you about the autosomal dominant uh, and I used the Huntington disease as an example uh, to give you an understanding of the autosomal dominant genetic disorders uh, then uh, I talked about the autosomal recessive genetic diseases uh, and I told you about the sickle cell anemia and the cystic fibrosis as an example of the autosomal recessive disorders. Now in this particular series of videos, I'll be focusing on the X-linked recessive genetic disorders and I'll be using the uh, hemophilia as an example of the X-linked recessive disorder. So the first thing is what is hemophilia? Now the hemophilia is an inherited bleeding disorder that means that the hemophilia will be transferred from one generation to another generation therefore we are using the term inherited and this is a bleeding disorder and when you talk about this bleeding disorder that means that the blood the, the, the blood it does not clot properly now this can lead to spontaneous bleeding and as well as bleeding following the injuries uh, or surgeries now, when you talk about the uh, blood clotting, uh, the blood contains many kinds of the proteins uh, which are known as the clotting factors. Uh, these clotting factors, they help to stop bleeding. And when you talk about the hemophilic individuals, they have got a deficiency or these clotting factors, the specific clotting factors, they are totally missing. Two of the important clotting factors uh, with respect to the hemophilia, one is known as the factor eight, which is responsible for causing the hemophilia A and another important clotting factor which is known as the factor 9 it is actually responsible for the uh, causing the hemophilia B so uh, when you talk about these hemophilic individuals uh, there will be uh, low levels of these factor 8 or factor 9 or they will be totally missing now the severity of the hemophilia that a person has that is actually determined by the amount of factor in the blood and if there is low amount of the factors these clotting factors the more likely it is that bleeding will occur which can lead to serious health problems now the uh, bleeding uh, that also depends on the type of the organ that is involved for example you can expect to see this kind of the complication uh, if the bleeding is happening in the joints muscles brains or other internal organs so the bleeding uh, can uh, produce uh, serious complications if it is happening in the uh, internal organs now in rare cases a person can develop hemophilia later in life as i've told you hemophilia uh, is an inherited disorder uh, but there are chances that uh, a person can develop hemophilia later in his or her life now majority of these cases uh, they involve the middle age or elderly people or young women who have recently uh, given birth or are in the later stages of their pregnancy the good thing is that this kind of the condition they often resolve with appropriate treatment uh, as compared to the hemophilia a and the hemophilia b because the treatment that you are using for the uh, hemophilia a and the b they are only minimizing the problem they are not the actual treatment because the genetic diseases they are not yet curable now the major type of this condition the hemophilia uh, the hemophilia uh, there are two major types one is known as the hemophilia a uh, this hemophilia a is also known as the classic uh, classic hemophilia and this will be the focus of this particular video uh, in the hemophilia a there will be factor 8 deficiency or the factor 8 will be totally missing the second important major type of the hemophilia that is known as the hemophilia b that is also known as the Christmas disease or that is also known as the factor 9 deficiency because in the hemophilia B the factor 9 will be deficient or the factor 9 will be totally missing. Now although these two types the hemophilia A and the B they have very similar signs and symptoms they are caused by mutation in different genes and we will see that. Now the people with an unusual form of the hemophilia B which is known as the hemophilia B leaden they experience uh, episodes of excessive bleeding in their childhood but they have few bleeding problems after the puberty when you talk about the uh, frequency of the hemophilia uh, so these two major forms of the hemophilia the hemophilia a 
and hemophilia B that occur much more commonly in males than in females. And the reason is, is very obvious. When you talk about the hemophilia, hemophilia is a, a recessive disorder. That means that both of the copies of the genes that are coding for that particular protein that should be in the mutant form. As we are talking about the hemophilia and the gene for the hemophilia is present on the X chromosome. And if you can see over here, females have got two X chromosomes. The male, they have got one X chromosome. The other sex pair, uh, the other uh, uh, member of this particular sex pair is the Y chromosome. That means that one of the X chromosome is already missing in the males. So they are hemizygous. So uh, when you talk about the hemophilia, there are two copies in the X chromosome of that particular gene. There are two copies of the gene because they have got two copies of the X chromosome. That means there will be one mutation on this X chromosome, one mutation on this X chromosome. But here you only need one mutation. So it is, you can say, uh, very much easy to get one mutation as compared to getting two mutations. So that is why the hemophilia that is much more common in males as compared to the females. Now, the hemophilia A, that is the most common form of the hemophilia because when you look at the frequency, so 1 in 4,000 or 1 in 5,000 males uh, worldwide, they are born with this particular disorder. If you compare that with the hemophilia B, so 1 in out of 20,000 newborn males worldwide. That means that the hemophilia B is less common as compared to the uh, hemophilia A. Now, why the uh, X-linked uh, disorders, especially the recessive one, they are more common in the uh, males as compared to the females. I have a detailed video on that and I'll share the uh, link in the description. When you talk about the hemophilia A, uh, there are mutations in a particular gene and mutation in that gene that is actually leading to the hemophilia A. So the gene that is responsible for hemophilia A, or you can uh, say that the mutations in the gene that is responsible for hemophilia A, that particular gene is known as the F8 gene. Now this F8 gene, it is actually made up of 186,000 bases. It contain 26 exons and it actually encode the uh, factor 8 clotting factor and the factor 8 clotting factor is made up of 2332 amino acids. When you talk about the mutations, so three kind of the mutations that occur in the F8 gene and that mutation is actually uh, leading to the formation of an abnormal factor 8. Now all of these three kind of the mutations, they are point mutation. By that I mean that there will be only change in a single base pair. And that particular change in the uh, single base pair that will be responsible for causing the hemophilia. So you can expect three kinds of the point mutation in the F8 gene, and those kind of the mutation will be leading to hemophilia A. So the first type of the mutation that is known is the missense mutation. Uh, so the first thing you need to understand is what is a missense mutation. In missense mutation, one amino acid is replaced with another amino acid when there is mutation in the DNA or mutation in the gene. This is what is called is the missense mutation that instead of one amino acid, another amino acid is appearing in that particular protein. This will be clear with this particular example. Now when you talk about this F8 gene, in its exon number 19, there is a G to A point mutation. That means if the G changes to A, so as only a single base that is changing, we call this as the point mutation. And this point mutation is actually happening at 6089 nucleotide number. So this is the number of the nucleotide where the G that has been replaced by the A. Now what happens is that when you replace this G by the A, so in normal cases, in normal F8 gene, when there is G, so the codon is A, G and T, and it codes for a serine in the protein. When this G, it changes to A, that means this AAT codon will be read for the asparagine. So you have replaced the serine amino acids by the asparagine amino acids in the factor 8. And when this change occur, that means you are not having a normal protein. 
So this kind of the mutation, uh, it is actually associated with mild hemophilia because you will see uh, when we discuss the other two types that in those particular cases, the nature of the protein that is very really much changed than the normal one or they are not made at all. But in this particular missense mutation, only a single amino acid that has been replaced. So you can expect very mild kind of the hemophilia when there is missense mutation in the FARG. The second kind of the mutation that you see in the uh, hemophilia A that is called is the nonsense mutation. Now, as the name indicate, we are talking about something nonsense that is happening. Now, in nonsense mutation, what happens is that when there is a base change, or you can say when there is a point mutation, that create a new stop codon. And that stop codon is actually created uh, somewhere in the middle of that particular protein, thereby leading to the formation of a shortened and unstable kind of the protein. For example, if you look at in this particular scenario, this one is the uh, normal amino acid sequence of the uh, factor A gene. You have got this protein, the protein, the isoleucine, the isoleucine, the alanine, arginine, tyrosine, isoleucine, then an arginine, and then a leucine. But when there is a mutation, as you can see over here, there is a C to T point mutation at nucleotide number 6682. And as you can see over here, in the normal case, there is a C, but in the mutated case, instead of the C, there is a T. Now this CGA, it actually calls for an arginine, but when you change this C to a T, this will be TGA, and this TGA is a stop codon. That means that below this point, these amino acids that will not be part of that particular protein that means you will be leading uh, you will be having a premature termination of translation there will be a shortened protein and that shortened protein is actually unstable protein if you see in this particular case this arginine is actually happening at position number 2228 amino acid this is the number of the arginine over here. That means that in this arginine, when this codon for the arginine is changed into a stop codon, you will be having a shortened protein because the total protein that I've told you that is made, that is 2332 amino acid. In this particular case, 105 amino acid, they will be missing. And if 105 amino acid are missing, that means you are talking about a shortened and unstable kind of the protein. And in this particular case, the patient, they have severe hemophilia A symptoms. The third kind of the mutation that is called is the frame shift mutation. Now, the first thing you need to understand is what is a frame shift mutation. Now, in the frame shift mutation, a different set of amino acid is read after the inserted or deleted base, thereby changing the biological activity of the protein and the biological activity is lost and it usually causes severe hemophilia A. That will be clear by this particular example. So when you, uh, when you talk about this frame shift mutation, it can be because of the insertion or deletion. We are focusing, uh, when you talk about the hemophilia, so we are talking about this deletion over here. Now in the frame shift mutation, in this particular case, a single A that is deleted at position number 36, 37. This is the nucleotide number, thereby changing all of the reading frame. Now, this is the normal sequence of the F8 uh, protein. Uh, this is ATT, this code for the isoleucine. This CAG, this code for the glutamine. This GAA is for the glutamic acid. This GA again is for the glutamic acid. Then the ATA is for the isoleucine. But if this A, it is deleted, that means you are only left with two bases and your translation system cannot read two base pairs. That is going to read three bases uh, and those three bases are known as the codon. So if this A is deleted, your translation system is going to read like T, T and C now. And this T, T and C, that codes for phenylalanine. Now when this C, it become part of this particular area, that means one base pair, one base that is missing over here. So it is going to read A, G and G. And this A, G, G, is going to code for the arginine. Similarly, this G is gone. That means that is going to uh, read the uh, A, A, and G now. And this A, A, G is for the lysine. Now this G again, it is gone. So this will be A, A, and A then. And this A, A is coding for the lysine. This T, A, and if you read the uh, forward base, uh, that is a G. And this T, A, G 
is actually going to lead to the uh, stop colon so as you can see over here a deletion in a single base is changing all of the amino acid following this deletion because all of the amino acid they are different and when they are different you are getting a different kind of the protein and that particular protein is not having any biological activity thereby leading to severe hemophilia a so these are the three kinds of the mutations that you can expect in the uh, hemophilia a in the factor a gene and because of this kind of the mutation that particular individual will be having the hemophilia a uh, in the next video, I'll be focusing on the coagulation cascade because uh, the, uh, in the hemophilia, if that is a bleeding disorder, you need to understand the normal blood clotting mechanism. So if you like the video, uh, please share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification uh, bell. I'll see you in the next video, inshallah.